good. I'd like to call to order the meeting of the Twin Falls City Council for Monday, May 1st, and confirm that we do have a quorum of the council here. All seven members are in attendance. Uh, for those of you wishing to join us, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Rothweiler, do we have any amendments to the agenda this evening? Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, there are no amendments this evening. Thank you. I would note we are utilizing our new uh, agenda system, so those of you in the audience here can follow along on the screen of where we are in the agenda. And as we get to opportunities for public input, we'll have, uh, there'll be a timer and the chance for you to have your name uh, input there. So as we get to those, we will fill you in on that. First, we do have a few proclamations this evening. The first is for Youth Appreciation Week 2017. Whereas the vast majority of youth are concerned, knowledgeable, and responsible citizens, and whereas Optimist International and the Twin Falls Optimist Club have developed and promoted a program entitled Youth Appreciation Week, and whereas the citizens of Twin Falls have indicated a desire to join the Optimists in expressing appreciation and approval for the contributions of youth, I, Sean Berriger, therefore proclaim the first week of May as Youth Appreciation Week in Twin Falls, Idaho. By this action, let it be known that we have faith in the ability of today's youth as they assume responsible roles in the future of mankind. And we have Dennis Boyer with the Optimus Club here to accept this this evening. Well, actually, I'd like to introduce Anna Scholes, who's the chairperson of this uh, program anyway. I'm still, I still have some contact with the city, so that's why I get that. Thank you. wondering how we choose the you're probably wondering how we choose the students that we are honoring we um, invite all of the students of the high schools of Magic Valley to participate and we send them our creed and this is how we want we want to live and this is how we want the youth to live so I went ahead and printed you all off a copy and Thank you. invite you to maybe take some time in your spare time and read our creed and I appreciate you honoring our students Thank you Thank you, Anna, and I'm looking forward to being a part of your luncheon later this week to help present the individual certificates to the recipients this year. Thank you. The next proclamation I have asked Councilwoman Ruth Pierce to read. Please. Thank you, Sean. Um, so this proclamation is the American Cancer Society's Paint the Town Purple, May 1st through May 12, 2017. Whereas an estimated 8,080 residents, Idaho residents, are diagnosed with cancer each year and 2,200 will not survive, and whereas the city is joining over 5,200 other communities worldwide to host the American Cancer Society's Relay for Life, an event, event to celebrate cancer survivors and remember those who are no longer with us. And whereas Relay for Life raises funds to help the American Cancer Society create a world with less cancer and more birthdays by helping people stay well, get well, find cures, and fight back. Therefore, Sean Berger, Mayor of the City of Twin Falls does hereby proclaim May 1st through May 12, 2017 as the American Cancer Society's Paint the Town Purple and the official kickoff for the Relay for Life in this city. In doing so, we urge citizens to celebrate cancer survivorship, remember loved ones lost to the disease, honor caregivers, join Magic Valley's fight against cancer, Display your purple around the town, home businesses, and schools. Only together will we find a cure. And it's signed by Mayor Sean Berger. And do we have uh, D. Jacobson here this evening? There you go.
thank you. And again, we encourage everyone to uh, participate in the various activities around the Relay for Life. Suzanne Hawkins. I would just like to say I came across the Perrine Bridge this afternoon about 2 o'clock with the wind blowing all those purple ribbons in the breeze, and it was very exciting to see. So you guys did a really good job. Thank you. Uh, and the final proclamation this evening is for uh, Building Safety Month, May 2017. Whereas our city is committed to recognizing our growth and strength depends on the safety and economic value of the homes, buildings, and infrastructure that serve our citizens both in everyday life and in times of natural disaster. And whereas our confidence in the structural integrity of these buildings that make up our community is achieved through the devotion of vigilant guardians, building safety and fire prevention officials, architects, engineers, builders, and others in the construction industry who work year round to ensure the safe construction of buildings. And whereas these guardians are dedicated members of the International Code Council that brings together local, state, and federal officials who are experts in the built environment to create and implement the highest quality codes to protect us in the buildings where we live, learn, work, worship, play, and whereas modern building codes adopted by the city and other jurisdictions in Idaho include safeguards to protect the public from natural disasters such as snowstorms, tornadoes, wildland fires, floods, and earthquake. And whereas Building Safety Month is to remind the public about the critical role of our community's largely unknown guardians of public safety, our local code officials, who assure us of safe, efficient, and livable buildings in Idaho. And whereas code officials, partners in community safety and economic growth, the theme for Building Safety Month 2017, encourages all Americans to raise awareness of the importance of building safe and resilient construction. And whereas in observance of Building Safety Month, we ask our citizens to consider the commitment to improve building safety and economic investment at home and in the community, and to acknowledge the essential services provided, excuse me, to all of us by local and state building departments, fire prevention bureaus, and federal agencies in protecting lives and property. Now therefore, I, Sean Berger, Mayor of the City of Twin Falls, do hereby proclaim the month of May 2017 as Building Safety Month. Accordingly, I encourage our citizens to join with the communities in participation in Building Safety Month activities. And Jared Bordy, there you are, Jared. There's actually a back that you didn't read on this, sorry. <laughs> Page two. <laughs> so really we're just grateful that the city can join uh, the state of Idaho. The governor signed a proclamation and there's many jurisdictions across the country that are recognizing Building Safety Month and we're just grateful that the city of Twin Falls can participate in that and recognize our local officials and designers and tradesmen. So thank you very much. Jared, thank you to you and your team for all that you do and helping to keep our community safe. Thank you. <laughs> so next on the agenda is an opportunity for general public input. So I will let people know if you are here this evening to speak about the welcoming community resolution. That is actually an agenda item that we will address later and there will be an opportunity for public input at that point. So this is if you're here to address an issue that is not on the agenda this evening. Now is your chance to come forward and, and address the council. So Brad, you get to be the first one with our new system. So hold on just a moment. I'm going to give you instructions. <laughs> <laughs> so, so again, just a reminder for our public input, you, you do need to be recognized by the mayor, approach the microphone and podium, uh, state your name and address, and whether you're a resident or property owner in the city of Twin Falls. And one thing we're going to add this evening is we're going to ask if, if Sharon doesn't know how to spell your name, if you would please spell your name so we can get it input into the minutes as we go. So that's the test. Welcome. You are recognized. Thank you. <laughs> Brad Wills. Okay. Two 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 Shoshone Street West, Twin Falls. I had an event this weekend that I just need to pass on while it's fresh in my mind. We have a manufactured home park that has 158 spaces on the south part of town. And at six o'clock Saturday night, we lost pressure in two thirds, or about three fourths of the park. No explanation, nobody working, no nothing other than we had probably over 100 people without water. 
And so um, by the time I got out there and was called, the water department was already out. And Skylane is a private property. We have one meter that serves the whole property. So when the city provides water, they provide it to the water meter. And then from then on, it is the private ownership of the park in this case. So we spent about two, three hours Saturday evening troubleshooting what was wrong and we came up with nothing. But we had two different city water department people there that made this their problem. It, I mean, you're, the one city idea, these guys just exonified this. It was so nice. So Sunday morning, back out there at 8.30, I have a city water department guy there. We end up hooking on to fire hydrants with water hoses to back um, pressure the parts of the park so we at least have some, some water there. Um, we never did solve it. Um, back this morning, three guys were out there at 8 o'clock. Again, not your problem, my problem, but the city made it their problem. And, and uh, John Caton, um, Rob with, this, with the water department, Mitch was involved, reminded me that we, we should do a boil water notice, which we did on Sunday. I would never have thought of that. But I just can't tell you how proud I was of the city. So, and that's, thank you very much. Thank you, Brad. We appreciate that. <laughs> Is there anyone else who wishes to address the council on items not on this evening's agenda? Mr. Capillaris. John Capillaris. One, two, three, one. <laughs> Sunburst. K-A-P-E-L-E-R-I-S. waiting with anticipation for it to pop up on the screen. <laughs> That's oh. easier. Than Close. <laughs> we'll get you in there, John. Go ahead. Um, uh, Mayor and Council, I had two events I wanted to tell you about um, and invite everyone to. Uh, the first one is the Twin Falls Senior Center second annual uh, fun run. As you know, and I'll present that. Uh, as you know, the, um, there's been uh, cuts to funding uh, for our meal programs for seniors, and 100% uh, um, uh, uh, of the proceeds go to the, the meal program, and uh, that is something that is uh, uh, very desperately needed at this time. And um, But the second event is uh, the Xavier Charter School Strawberry Festival, and uh, I'd like to invite everyone to that too. Um, the uh, Strawberry Festival is held uh, uh, May 13th, uh, 1 to 4, and that uh, is our, our levy because charter schools do not uh, partake in local levies. Um, so um, it, there's going to be free entertainment. Uh, there's going to be lots of things to buy because we're trying to raise money for uh, more classrooms. And the reason we're doing that is because we are a very successful charter school, and with success comes growth. And so we are trying to meet the needs of all the, all the children in Twin Falls and the Magic Valley uh, who want to, to choose classical education. Um, so if I may approach the dais, I will. You may. Thank you. Thank you, John. <coughs> Suzanne, did you have a I did. I have a question? quick question for John. <coughs> I'm sorry, John, if I missed it, but did you tell us when and where the fun run is? Oh, I don't think I did. It's at uh, the um, can uh, Rock Creek Canyon Parkway, uh, which is a beautiful place to at 9 o'clock in the morning this Saturday. And um, it's, um, and you can go to the website to register for that. It's uh, a very beautiful, peaceful experience. So it's on the Senior Center website? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, John. Is there anyone else who wishes to address the council this evening on an item not on the agenda? Travis Rothweiler. So, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, just to kind of add, so it is this Saturday. It's a 5K run. It says that the run's going to begin at the Rock Creek Parkway trailhead down from the Twin Falls City Parks and Recreation Office. 
beginning at 9 o'clock uh, a.m. And then there's a list of prices that um, we will make sure that we scan this and get this to each member of the council. We'll also uh, post it uh, in a uh, spot inside of City Hall. Thank you, Travis. Chris Talkington. Yeah, I'd like to backtrack just a second. Mr. Wills brought up a, a pretty um, important uh, issue to us, and it bothers me that you don't know what the problem was and the city doesn't know the water uh, pressure loss. It, it, I mean, could it be repeated? Uh, where are we on that? 100 homes left without water is a safety hazard. Brad Wills, may I approach? You may. <laughs> Thank you, Brad. <laughs> so it is baffling. I mean, it, again, fire safety is probably, you know, with I had lunch with Jared last week, and we were talking about codes and, and stuff. And, it, you know, that is the main thing about codes is public safety. And, and that was the water department's main concern is we had no fire flow. If we had a fire, you know, what, what would we do? Um, I had lunch with a, an engineer today, and other than you can get a water, an airlock in a water line, but this just didn't act like it. Um, we still don't. It's, it's not your problem uh, because it's beyond the meter, but we honestly have, we've never had this before. And um, I'm, st you know, mm -hmm. I, did inter I did research and stuff, but. An airlock and a what a ten or a twelve inch water well, line. These are only six inch lines. Oh, but it's still. Well, yeah. Well, if you're not worried, I guess we shouldn't be. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Probably should note, Brad, that it's, so it's not like you have stopped working on this issue. You're trying to resolve it within. So, Travis. So I think that there's a couple of points. Um, number one, I think that, um, you know, Brad is absolutely correct that the responsibility because it's a private system. And I think that you need to look at this as a private water system that receives its initial delivery from the city of Twin Falls is the responsibility of, of, the, of the private property owner. And, and, and as you can see, Brad is taking full responsibility with that. We are happy to work with all of our customers um, and, and provide the expertise that we can even when those issues and problems are outside of our jurisdiction. If this issue would have happened inside of another community, um, we should have the expectation that we're going to lend our time, our talent, and our expertise to help those situations. The other important thing to remember is that our fire department also operates within the fire district, and so they have water tenders, and, and in those cases, they have the ability to bring the water that they need uh, should there have been an unfortunate <coughs> event of a, of a fire issue. Um, our members of our water team communicated directly with the fire department to make them aware that should they be in a position of having to respond in that area, they would want to also bring water tenders uh, to be able to back uh, the, the water supply needed. So I, I think that, you know, we'll continue to lend our expertise to Brad to, to the, the degree in which we can. Um, and I thank Brad for coming forward and really acknowledging the efforts of the team over the weekend. Um, I think it illustrates you know, how far these guys are willing to go to make sure that all citizens within our community uh, receive uh, the appropriate levels of services. Thank you. All right, so seeing no other general public input, we will move on with the agenda. So the next item uh, is the consent calendar. Council wishes. Greg Lane. Move approval of consent calendar as published. Second. Motion by Greg Lanting, seconded by Ruth Pierce, to approve the consent calendar as published. Is there any council discussion? Seeing none, Sharon, roll call vote, please. Sean Berriger? Yes. Nikki Boyd? Yes. Suzanne Hawkins? Yes. Greg Lanting? Yes. Ruth Pierce? Yes. Christopher Reed? Yes. Chris Talkington? Yes. <coughs> Motion passes 7-0. So those of you who are here for the bed races special event, the uh, Spirit of the Magic Valley Half Marathon and 5K, and also the Kids Bridge to Success, those were just approved. You're welcome to stick around for the rest of the meeting, but there you go. <coughs> Next under items for consideration, uh, the first is a request to approve the use of Shoshone Falls Reserve Funds to repair Centennial Trail. We have Wendy Davis, our Parks and Recreation Director. Yes, Nikki Boyd. Well, while Wendy's approaching, are we 
we're not actually showing the agenda on the screen for everybody to follow along. Is are we working on that? She's moving to it right now. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want me to wait? You're good. Go ahead. Thank you, Wendy. Good evening. Um, I'm here this evening to ask um, that you approve the use of uh, Shoshone Falls reserve funds to repair the Centennial Trail. As we talked about a couple weeks ago, the damage to that trail is fairly significant. Um, Parks has been down there evaluating the damage, and it turns out that it's probably in our best interest to have um, somebody come in and help us with that. So we did call a company to come down and give a, a rough estimate of approximately what it would take to repair the trail replace the base, cut out the broken asphalt, replace the base, put in the new asphalt, and also install some um, culverts to manage the water. And then we went back through and decided before we brought this forward, let's take a look at the whole picture. And we went down there with two of the staff engineers to ensure that we had a plan that would not only repair the trail, but would do some water management that would hopefully avoid any future occurrences to this degree. I think there's always going to be some water trying to run down there, but if we can kind of help it go where we'd like it to and keep it from damaging the trail in the future is what we're hoping to do. So um, obviously the flood water damaged it in February. Um, the the uh, estimate I had, $60,000 would be adequate to cover it, including a little bit of excess if we needed to um, do some drilling to put some of those culverts in and do some of the water management piece. So the um, last time I checked, and this is before each week it changes, <laughs> but the reserve funds were over $250,000. So there's money in the account to do this if you are so inclined to approve. Thank you, Wendy. Any questions for Wendy? Chris Talkington. I think it's essential. we not only keep the uh, repairs up the snuff, but uh, uh, continue with the linking of Shoshone Falls to um, uh, Washington with the extension we're planning. This, uh, this is turning into a destination type of a trail for us in southern Idaho, and as such, I would approve up to the 60,000 mark for the uh, specified Centennial Trail repairs. I would second that motion. So we have a motion by Chris Talkington, seconded by Nikki Boyd, to uh, approve the request of up to $60,000 of the Shoshone Falls Reserve Funds to repair Centennial Trail and provide water management there as presented. Is there any discussion? Sharon, roll call vote, please. Nikki Boyd? Yes. Suzanne Hawkins? Yes. Greg Lanting? Yes. Ruth Pierce? Yes. Christopher Reed? Yes. Chris Talkington? Yes. Sean Berriger? Yes. Motion passes 7 to 0. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you. <coughs> Next under items for consideration is a request to adopt a resolution declaring the city's intent to dispose of real property mm -hmm. and setting a date for a public hearing. And we have Mitch Humble, Deputy City Manager. Welcome, Mitch. Okay, so I didn't realize we were going to be doing this, so I brought old-fashioned paper copies. Mm -hmm. That's okay, um, you can do that too. <laughs> can we s switch to this thing so I can use the... works good enough. So um, you'll all recall that we recently went through this process with some very generous folks um, at MavTech to help us acquire some property um, to make a trail connection across the preserve property. And, and that trail is shown in this heavy black line all the way up. You know, right about here is the jump site just off the screen and right about here is the corner of Pole Line and Eastland just off the screen that side. Um, so due to that generosity, we now own this property for the trail. Um, there's two pieces here I want to talk to you about tonight. Right, right here you see there's 
kind of two black lines that get you from A to B, and then right over here, do the same thing. And so in those two cases, property owners up here on the, on the north side of the trail have come to, um, and, and then over here there's three different property owners, have come to an agreement with Gary Storer to purchase this chunk here and this chunk in here as, and add to their lots on the north side. Um, and why that's important for us is because they have now approached us to maybe trade what we own right here for a strip right through here and then on this side um, what we own back through here with a strip right through there and why that is maybe valuable for us is on one hand we eliminate eight kind of hard turns in this trail making it a little bit smoother more efficient a um, uh, little bit easier to, to maneuver through that area but also it eliminates nearly a thousand feet of construction of trail and fence and so we could potentially save quite a bit of money on our on our construction of this of this project. So, <coughs> what we'd like to do is ask the council if you would like to entertain this idea of a trade. Um, we have um, one property owner we're working with on a trade here, and then up here it would be three different property owners, but the end result is the same. And so. If, if that's something we want to talk about, then what we'll do tonight is I have a resolution that's attached in the, um, in the packet. And if we adopt that resolution, what that does is it declares the city's intent to consider trading away this property, to consider disposing of property. And also it sets a public hearing for that, um, for that night to happen. I want to say that's May 20, I should have read that right before you said May 22nd, I think is what we have scheduled. So. If we approve the resolution tonight, we'll go ahead and, and post a public hearing, notify for that public hearing, and then on that night, we can come back and hear from everybody who wants to say something about this. Um, and then if approved at that point, we would move forward with the trail, <coughs> with the property exchanges. Um, hopefully I talked about that well enough. Do you have any mm -hmm. questions? If not, <laughs> sure. And what's the resolution number? 2017-7. Talking to Mitch, uh, we had some concern from <coughs> property owners somewhere along there about the proximity of the right. the trail to be built to their bedroom windows or mm -hmm. kitchen or something. Is that in any of the impacted areas? Uh, exactly. That is one of the property owners we're talking about. So we heard from the owner of this home right here, and that is the homeowner that is going to purchase this chunk, pushing that trail a little bit further away from them instead of going right down here. It's still on them on two other sides, but it pushes a little further away on the third. Any other questions for Mitch? If not, what would the council like to do? Ruth Pierce. I move we um, adopt resolution 2017-7, um, declaring the intention of the city to exchange property and setting a date for the public hearing. Second. Motion by Ruth Pierce, seconded by Suzanne Hawkins to adopt resolution 2017-7. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, Chair and roll call vote, please. Suzanne Hawkins? Yes. Greg Lanting? Yes. Ruth Pierce? Yes. Christopher Reed? Yes. Chris Hawkington? Yes. Sean Berger? Yes. Nikki Boyd? Yes. Motion passes 7 to 0. Thank you, Mitch. <coughs> Next on the agenda is discussion regarding the City Council's request for staff to prepare a welcoming resolution. We have our City Manager, Travis Rothweiler. Welcome, Travis. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the Council. Um, thank you for the opportunity to be before you tonight to talk about the resolution. Um, the first thing I want to say is that before we begin this conversation, uh, staff does not believe that the, the resolution that will be before you tonight is complete. Uh, in fact, we don't believe that the resolution that we put before you is one that you should consider for adopting tonight. We think that it's probably something that um, probably is something that needs to be reviewed, it needs to be vetted, it needs to be the 
discussed. It needs to be um, debated. And we hope tonight that we create an opportunity for a civil debate of ideas to occur. Um, so what I want to do is I want to take you back over the course of the last couple of weeks and, and share into the conversations that we, um, that we had um, with members of the community as they um, moved forward. And, and we were incredibly pleased with the amount of public input that came in this process. Uh, we received 31 phone calls. We received 13 emails. We had four in-person visits. And we had one written letter. It's a total of 49 individuals that have an opinion and a thought that they would like to share as part of this process. I have the role tonight to share that. And so the first thing I want to do is <coughs> I want to apologize to those individuals who I'm going to be sharing their words in the event that I don't quite get it right. Um, I'm being a translator of, of what I would describe as real emotion and real thought um, in this process. In fact, what I would share is that the conversations that we had uh, throughout this entire process were incredibly civil. Um, there was passion, there was feeling, but there was civility. And we're hoping that those same conversations, that spirit of that same conversation that we had is able to come forward tonight, um, maybe even those who, who will speak later. Because I'm sure that there will be several. Um, and I also hope that my words and my remarks don't offend any of the individuals um, who have spoken. We are keeping their comments and their thoughts anonymous. Um, because I think the who said it is less important than what was said in that conversation. And so here's a few notables. <coughs> the first thing that we noted is that there is no or little commonality in the input that was provided to us in this process. Uh, in other words, there was not an overarching reason uh, of the individuals who reached out to us to share um, one side or the other. In fact, many of those who shared their support um, uh, shared so with very specific reasons that we'll talk about same as those who were opposed. Um, and as noted, it's not necessarily a debate about for and against, because some of the individuals wanted to say that after you resolve to do something, what are you going to do? And that was one of the things that, that, that caused us. It was spoke last week, and it also was one of the things that, that we took into account in the resolution that we'll show uh, in a little bit. Some wanted to make sure that supporting the resolution, um, because they did not want us to view, they did not want to be viewed or have the council be viewed that they were afraid to commit to take an action. Um, others opposed the resolution on a humanitarian level, stating that they were concerned that it's not a refugee problem but it also might be those members of our community who have been marginalized across the conversation. And so that was one of the conversations that really struck us was that in becoming a welcoming, becoming a welcoming community or a balanced community or a safe community, there was this conversation that was being held that was far greater than just refugee status. And there were individuals who were upset about the vulnerability of, of some of the individuals. Um, they were concerned about those families who are being resettled into our community and whether or not the spirit of Twin Falls was going to really show that we were a compassionate people, that we were a people that were willing to embrace individuals from different cultures who may be different, who may look different, who may have different beliefs, but yet at the same time 
Were we willing to accept them if they were willing to assimilate? Um, they were concerned um, about having a community, also about maybe those who are elderly. What are we doing for our elderly population? What are we doing for those who have some mental instabilities? We were surprised that those who spoke to us, and one of the reasons that we want to keep this anonymous is because those who spoke did not want to be branded on one side of the issue or the other. That their thoughts and their feelings were of their own, but they didn't want to necessarily be stereotyped into a particular class or a particular group of our community because they may have some of the similar beliefs. And that occurred on both sides. Um, and to a much lesser extent, some of the other concerns that were shared um, came up in terms of the amount of tax dollars that are being shared. Crime increasing because of refugees. Um, a, resolution, a resolution that is just a gateway of becoming a sanctuary city. And what was interesting in this entire process is that when you're examining a welcoming resolution, part of that examination, individuals are automatically leaping to the place, well, that means that you are sanctuary. So we started internally removing the term welcoming and using the term neighborly because we felt that that was maybe a term that had not been taken to a different place other than maybe what the council's intent uh, was when they crafted or asked staff to develop this. They believed that moving forward, um, they spotted those who supported it had a broad range of reasons including it's an opportunity for all of us to recognize that there is value in diversity that there is an opportunity for us as a community to recognize that the differences actually create strengths and bonds that create a much stronger uh, experience inside of Twin Falls. Um, and that they um, felt that creating such a resolution means that the city takes a stand against hate that we don't believe that hate has a place within our community. And one of the resounding things is, it's the right thing to do. Welcoming, being supportive, whether or not that falls within a particular religion or, or Christian belief system, they really, some talked about the Good Samaritan and the role that we have to the broader community. So that was the input. And the input, um, I think that the members of our team who had the opportunity to participate in this really had the opportunity to learn and to grow in this process. Um, and so what we have before you is our attempt to take the conversations that we've heard take those conversations and boil them down um, and reduce it to writing. Um, and remember that we were trying to create something that is actionable at the end of that process. And again, I'm not certain that we believe that this is complete. Um, and, and we would encourage the council to honestly critique our work effort and our work product. and. Um, we will strive to reach that bar that you have set if we and undoubtedly have fallen short this evening. So I'm going to ask Sharon to flip the screen we're working on. So we think that this is a really neat, cool feature. And if you're online, you can watch how people have voted. And it's in real time. And that's really good. We'll, we're learning the system. We'll work through the bugs. We promise we'll get smooth. It's kind of like riding a bicycle, right? Mm -hmm. Um, we'll get smooth and we'll go ahead and go through this. We also have copies and we recognize that unfortunately this is not 
um, the most easy and convenient. We brought copies for individuals. Um, we'd ask that you would share, be neighborly in your approach. <laughs> Are you going to read it, Travis? Um, I am not. I wasn't necessarily going to read it verbatim. What I was going to do is is talk about the key points in the different whereases and the thought and the logic behind those processes. So I might ask Mitch to maybe make this. So you can see um, it, it is contained to a single page. We're going to ask individuals to share. Mitch, if you could kind of maybe blow that up for individuals who were not able to. So what we've done in this entire process is we've created a series of, of whereases and maybe going back into a process um, in, whenever you go forward and you create a resolution, you go, you're going to have the recitals. And the recitals describe the environment or the process in which this resolution is being created. It talks about um, the conditions, the circumstances, and maybe actions that have occurred uh, in the past or suggestions. And so what we did was we, we took um, the conversations that we had and we created what you have here. Um, and so in the very first whereas, we say that the city of Twin Falls strives to foster a culture and environment to make it a vibrant city where all residents have the opportunity to fully participate in the social, civic, economic fabric of our community. And, and really what we wanted to start in that process was a high level understanding and really hitting on the term community, that we believe that individuals within our community have the opportunity to contribute to the betterment of our home, to our place, and that their shared experiences have the opportunity to enhance the city of Twin Falls by bringing their individual contributions and their perspectives. So what we're saying is that we recognize in this first whereas that individuals as part of our, com our community is stronger as a result of becoming more diverse. The second piece is that we found ourselves in these conversations going back to a document that you created in 2012 and adopted in 2013. And when you reflect upon the city's strategic plan that was adopted um, in a maybe a different operating time. In that time, we had set a community series of visions. In fact, we didn't do it alone. We often share that those vision statements, those focus areas were driven by the community. We had incredible outreach process. It was the very first time in the city's strategic planning process that we reached out to our stakeholders and we said, what do you want to become? And as you recall from those areas, we created seven focus areas, eight focus areas if you count the internal. We'll talk about that. But we counted seven 
external focus areas, one internal focus areas, eight in total, all of equal value, each one saying, we cannot be the community that we hope to become if we can't move forward with any of those. So we adopted a strategic plan, we had stakeholders, we talked about the current and the future needs of our community. We said that it supports a healthy, learning, secure, accessible, environmental, prosperous, responsible visions for our community. We also talked about the importance of the internal organization. And most importantly about that strategic planning process, we recognized that we would fall short in accomplishing any of those visions if we did not have a quality working relationship with all of our partners throughout that process. There's a strong emphasis on partners. Focus Area 7 talks about a responsible community and it identifies initiatives to ensure that all new residents are welcome and made to feel part of a tightly knit community. That the community is actively engaged in various private, or excuse me, public, private, civic institutions serving the area through volunteerism and the involvement in neighborhoods and local government activities. If you take a look at the words that are expressed in Focus Area 7, that is its summation. That is what was created by our community in saying we need this to be able to reach and strive the vision that we hope to become by 2030. We said, and this has been an important point, that elected officials, city staff, <laughs> key city staff, police officers, and many others have taken oaths of office to support and defend the Constitution of the United States, the state of Idaho, and we will support and uphold the laws and ordinances of the city of Twin Falls. All doing so in the area of public safety. Making sure that we have a safe and secure community is the focus area three. I'm going to ask Mitch to kind of scroll that up because we're getting to the bottom. Of a secure community, which reinforces this responsibility and identifies initiatives to ensure that all residents and visitors enjoy a high level of safety and to feel safe and to develop effective partnerships with all individuals and groups to ensure broad-based effective involvement in the prevention of crime and threats to our public safety. Again, like focus area number seven, that is the recital that if you boil it down, that is the recital of a secure community that was adopted by the council and has been the foundation and the cornerstone of us moving forward as an organization. We also, as an organization, have taken great time in sharing that the fabric of the public services that we provide are provided by the dedicated men and women of the city of Twin Falls. You know, Mr. Wills took an opportunity to share about how dedicated our public <coughs> works team Water Division are under the leadership of John Caton and Rob Bowling. And that is an example that you see across the board. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that as the community's partner, as the general government for the city of Twin Falls, that we are doing our part all of the time to ensure that we're not only providing a safe and secure community, but we're also providing one that is neighborly. Um, and that we also say that the city of Twin Falls employees are public servants, serving all residents. See, the serving does not necessarily allow us to pick sides. And in this resolution, what we tried to do this evening is to take a blended approach. And we recognize that this probably falls short because there were, it, if of the conversations, I think one of the things that was consistent, like <coughs> we shared, is that there was a lack of consistency. And in a world of black and white, this is incredibly great. <coughs> and it's, the recitals kind of create the environment that what we heard 
but also the process um, that we've gone through in the past. And so we found ourselves restating several of those strategic planning objectives. And one of the things that we wanted to do, and I'm going to go back to the action-oriented plan, is that I would encourage all citizens who have not taken a look at our strategic planning process to review that. Because it is full of actions, it is full of goals, it is full of objectives, and the beauty is we are going through a revision process. We're revising that strategic plan as we speak right now, and we would welcome the community to participate in that process as we examine not only these focus areas, but all of the other focus areas that are included to create a community. And what this is about is the be it result. That we're hoping that it is, again, we took an opportunity to craft. You will not insult the members of, of the team that, that spent time on this. Um, because this is this is an important issue, and and we really believe that it is an opportunity to work collaboratively through differences of thought civilly, as opposed to picking sides. Because Twin Falls is far too great of a community to pick winners and losers. And when you look here, it says that the city of Twin Falls affirms its, co its commitment to the vision, goals, and initiatives of the strategic plan. To build a community where all residents are welcome, accepted, and given opportunity to connect with each other without bias and common pursuit of goals, and to encourage individual residents, community institutions, civic groups, business leaders, to join in a community-wide effort to adopt practices, policies and practices to promote unity, inclusion, understanding, and equity. That does not exist. That right there, that statement cannot exist unless we are willing to work collaboratively with one another. We are not asking individuals to settle, to sacrifice, to compromise. We're asking individuals to work with one another to find understanding find understanding that allows us as a community to advance and move forward. <coughs> I am sure that there are many people that are dying to critique the work <laughs> um, and we welcome that. And again, um, we apologize to those individuals where we didn't quite create and realize or create the document that they believed that should be there. But again, we believe that we took all the thoughts, all the opinions, all the sentiments, and we rolled it into um, a single document for your debate, review, and consideration. Happy to stand for any questions that you might have, um, but I believe that there are others who may want to also offer their thoughts and contributions. Good starting point. <clears throat> Are there any specific questions for Travis, maybe about mechanics or anything here, before we uh, move forward to invite members of the public to uh, provide their input on this issue? So I don't see any, so I believe we have a sign-in sheet, so we'll grab that and we will do our best to follow along with that. Again, I do ask folks to please be concise in your comments. Keep them limited to uh, no more than three minutes. Um, to Travis's point earlier, I think to have a civil conversation as we move forward would be beneficial to all of us who are uh, here to be a part of this. Uh, and as, as you're invited to approach the podium, if you would please state your name and address for the record, uh, whether you're a resident or a property owner in the city of Twin Falls, and then as we are keeping the uh, information in our new system. If you could please spell your name uh, for us, and then we'll, uh, we'll run the timer there. So I'm going to say everybody on this list is here to speak on this one. So we'll just start at the top and move through. Uh, the first is Eleanor Burkhart.
Eleanor Burghardt, 1530 Targi Drive. I live there and I own the house. It's E-L-E-A-N-O-R-E. -E. Burkhardt is B-U-R-K-H-A-R-T. Hold, please. <laughs> Making sure we get that set up there. <clears throat> there we go. Well, Mayor Barraker and City Council members, I am Eleanor Burkhart, and I am the child of a refugee. But my story is unusual, an unusual refugee story, and it's one of which I am very proud. My refugee story began in the early 20th century in Lithuania, where my well-educated <coughs> well grandfather was a tutor of five languages, and he also practiced the ancient art of cupping, which has uh, experienced a uh, resurgence. His cupping was limited to medical treatment. Now, no one, uh, one would expect that this family would be well respected in this community, but that was not so. Because they were German, they suffered discrimination by the Lithuanians, by the Poles, and by the Russians. So, to escape this pers persecution, my mother. At the very young age of 14, just a little girl, and all by herself, slipped out of Lithuania at night, climbed into a boxcar, a railroad boxcar, and rode across Europe by herself till she got to Antwerp, Belgium. There she boarded an ocean liner, made the long journey to a foreign country all by herself, and when she got to Ellis Island, she was processed there all by herself, a little girl of 14. And I wonder, could any of us had that kind of courage at the age of 14? My mother became a good citizen, a pioneer, and an important member of her community in Colorado. My father, a first-generation American, born of German immigrants, also was a good citizen, a pioneer, and a solid member of the community. I married a man who was also a first born, a first Amer a generation American, born of German and Russian immigrants. Twin Falls welcomed us, and we have contributed to this community. We also produce children who are good citizens, and they have uh, uh, participated to the society. My point is, Twin Falls is already a welcoming city. To proclaim otherwise, or to put restrictions on welcoming immigrants is simply silly. However, it will encourage our citizens to make immigrants feel welcome and valuable. So therefore, I urge that you pass this resolution to make Twin Falls a welcoming city. Thank you, Mrs. Burkhardt. So I know people have passions on both sides of this issue and in an attempt to please get through everyone, if we could please hold the applause and the responses following each, it, it would be much appreciated. Rosie Strobel is next. <laughs> My name's Rosie Strobel. I live at 1726 Palmerell Drive. I support the welcoming resolution. Uh, I believe in the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. And I would want, if, if I were in the situation of some refugees, I would want the kind of consideration that this resolution will show. Uh, I speak from personal experience in having two very good family friends who have contributed to this community in a big way, very intelligent people, big contributors, and I really encourage the support of us being welcoming. Thank you. And <laughs> Next, we have Melissa Jolson. Good evening, Mario Berger and council members. My name is Melissa Jolson. 
I live outside of Twin Falls in Twin Falls County. I'm here tonight to support the passage of a welcoming city resolution. Why ever would we choose not to join 40 million other Americans who have already designated their cities as welcoming? I've been surprised by the reluctance to the resolution that I've heard, but I do understand that people are afraid of what they perceive as different. We need to remember, though, that different changes with the times. Benjamin Franklin was afraid that too many Germans would destroy our then predominantly British culture. In 1834, a mob burned a um, convent down in Massachusetts due to anti-Catholic sentiment, and Irish immigrant men were perceived as lazy drunks and job stealers. In 1938, the governor of Missouri expelled all Mormons from his state. Until the late 19th century, Jews were not permitted to vote in Rhode Island, North Carolina, and New Hampshire. At the beginning of the 20th century, Poles and Italians were believed to be too different to ever assimilate into American life. The same fears about jobs, culture, and assimilation have been raised about Hispanics and Chinese, both locally and nationally, and now it's Muslims. We've gotten over most of these biases, and now it's time to get over the last. When referring to refugees, I hear people come to this podium and talk about they and them as though the newcomers are different from us and we. If those people mean Muslims, they only have to look around to realize that they have been a part of us for a very long time. In Twin Falls, they are the clerk at Home Depot, the fitness instructor, the nurse, the doctor, the restaurateur, the hairdresser, the soccer coach, the school custodian, the tailor, the nurse practitioner, the teacher, the dental assistant, the plant geneticist, the shop owner, the carpenter, the forestry biologist, the milker, and, of course, the yogurt maker. What I'm saying is that along with Hindu, Baha'i, Mandaean, Buddhist, Jewish, Orthodox, and Christian refugees, Muslims have been contributing, working, voting parts of our community for decades. And indeed, some refugees have gotten in trouble. But a statistic that I want you to know is that communities with higher numbers of refugees have lower crime rates than communities with fewer refugees. And refugees' crimes are no different from anybody else's. I don't think there's any question that we will continue to have only one set of laws and require that everyone uphold them. We can't let our Twin Falls tradition of being a warm and welcoming community become a victim of misunderstanding-driven hate and fear. We can't do that. That would be our shame. Thank you. Next is Daryl Weber. So for the sake of the timer up here, if we could get your name and get the spelling first, and then we'll have you start speaking, please. Okay. Daryl Weber, that's D-A-R-Y-L, and Weber with one B. And I live at 1152 Southview Drive in Twin Falls County, and I own the property there. I also wanted to speak in support of a welcoming or a neighborly resolution. Um, I spoke, I think, at the last meeting where this issue was discussed, um, and I mentioned that um, I really appreciate Twin Falls being a welcoming city. Um, it was one of the things that attracted my husband and I three years ago to move here and make our home here. Um, we saw the diversity here, uh, and that's something that we appreciate. Um, and I think as others have said, we appreciate being welcomed ourselves and we want to reach out and welcome others. Um, when I first heard about this proposal for a resolution from the Boy Scouts, I was surprised that the focus seemed to be solely on refugees because I think that, that we want to be welcoming to all. Um, and that includes refugees, it includes immigrants, it includes those born in the U U.S., those born outside of the U.S. Um, I also wanted to speak just 
once again about education because I am an educator. Um, I currently teach English as a second language at CSI. Um, this afternoon I had the pleasure of meeting with a refugee, a young man from the Congo, um, who is excited to start college. Um, and he uh, was moved here 10 months ago. So he's been in the U.S. only 10 months. He's been at work and he's already figuring this out. He's figuring out how to balance his, his work schedule um, and other commitments to be able to enter college. He knows how much hard work college is going to take, but he also recognizes how much it's going to help him. Um, and he wants it for himself and to contribute to the community. And I think that's just really the way that we want to welcome people that, that have that attitude, um, that want to work hard to better themselves and to better their community at the same time. Um, I really appreciate the city manager's focus on, on action. Um, and I find the, the last line of this resolution really inspiring, that we want to promote unity, inclusion, understanding, and equity. Um, and I know the manager mentioned that we don't want to take sides, and I appreciate that he encouraged us to try to find understanding, um, because if we believe diversity enriches us, that includes diversity of viewpoints. And so, so I, I want to try to find understanding with others who might disagree with me. Um, I do think, and I think that the manager mentioned this as well, that one thing that we can take a side against, though, is hate, and that we can agree on that, that, that there is no place for hate in our community. And so I think that that's one place where we can take a side um, and say that we are going to stand against that. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Next is Mark Crandall. Thank you. <coughs> I'd also like to speak in support of the welcoming resolution and so we need to get your oh, name right, and get you right. typed in the thing first and then sure. when the little when the red turns green you can <laughs> get started good my name is Mark Crandall uh, C-R-A-N-D-A-L-L -L, and I live at 430 Wild Rose Loop I live in the city we own our property there you go thank you okay thank you well thanks for having I appreciate uh, all the efforts of the city and the, the city manager for doing this welcoming city resolution. Mr. Rothrod was so humble in his introduction of this, I was thinking that there might be some glaring errors or problems, and I look at it, it actually looks very good. Um, I, I think that it's well written, I think that, that it's fair. Uh, I, I would like to speak in, in support of this. Uh, you know, Twin Falls is not the only city to look at this issue. There's hundreds of cities that have adopted welcoming resolutions. There's an organization, in fact, called Welcoming America and there are specific criteria to be a member of that organization of cities. Over three ci 300 cities have joined that, including Boise and Salt Lake. There's additional things besides resolutions and, and specific things, there's site visits, there's things, and I don't know if our city should be a part of that or not. I don't know if this resolution would pass their criteria to be a member of the Welcoming America organization or not, but I think it's a good resolution. I think it's unique to us, I think that it's well written, and I think that it's true to our strategic plan. It makes a lot of sense, and so I would speak in support of this resolution for three reasons, in order of most important to least important. Number one, most importantly, it is the right thing to do. Uh, I don't think I need to say anything more. Number two, I think it would help our refugee center. They have been under pressure these days financially, losing numbers of refugees. We know that we can't change the number of refugees in their center. We, we know we can't change the finances as a city. That's, that's outside of our jurisdiction. If they lose half their funding, they lose it. If they go under, they go under. But at least they know that we support them, that we want them in our community, and that would go a long ways, that, that it wouldn't just be Boy Scouts or college students on spring break or other volunteers at the center, but it would actually be a statement of support from the city council and from the mayor, the elected leaders of our city, in support of the welcoming city resolution. I think that would go a long ways. And then the third reason, which actually I think is the least important, but still a good one, it would improve our image as a city. Uh, I grew up in Twin Falls and I graduated in 1997. I actually had honors in English from Mrs. Burkhart who taught me how to, to speak and to write. Hopefully I'm doing okay, Ms. Burkhart, uh, 20 years ago in, in her honors English class. And, um, uh, and, and so I went abroad. And I went away you know, to different states to train and travel. For example, 10 years ago, I was at the Mayo Clinic doing my residency. And it was interesting to see what other people thought of Idaho. If they even knew where it was, they knew us for potatoes. But unfortunately, they knew us for Northern Idaho, uh, certain you know, supremacist groups in Northern Idaho, and that's what they knew us as. And I usually would say, well, don't worry, that's not, that's not us. I'm in southern Idaho. That's northern Idaho. Not anymore, though. If you look on a civil rights website, there's actually a civil rights group called the Southern Poverty Law Center, which has a hate watch list. They started out in Alabama. They kind of had a, it called, used to be called Klan Watch.
but now there's there's two cities in southern Idaho that are on the hate watch list. Twin Falls is one of them uh, for organizations within our city. And I think a resolution like this would go a long ways uh, in helping our image as a city to show that hate does not define us. We are not about that. We are about including everyone, including those who got us on that list. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Crandall. And next, I have Jenna Harder. Yes, Travis. So I was just I was just going to point out that there's there's two clocks moving. There was there was one clock that we have here. There was another yep. clock. Are they a little off? So we'll, about so 15 seconds off. Okay. So yeah. we'll so we'll make sure everybody gets their information in, and that clock on the screen starts before you start talking. My name is Jenna Harder. My address is 329 Fifth Avenue North, and I am a resident of Twin Falls and also a business owner. Go ahead. Um, I have been volunteering with the CSI Refugee Center as a mentor since last September, and so I feel like I have a unique perspective um, other than knowing people who have come in through the community as refugees. Um, it's different when you have met someone when they've already kind of been integrated into the community versus when they've just arrived. Um, one thing that shocked me at first was how little they come in with. Like, so the people that arrive in this country, in this community, have almost nothing. And they probably don't know the language. Um, and it, it's devastating. You know, like, I went home after two weeks, like, for two weeks straight after seeing people and visiting and, you know, taking, taking people to go, you know, get a phone card or just to help them communicate, you know, with their family members. Um, and I'd go back to my apartment and I would look at my, the things in my apartment and just be devastated, you know, because as an American, we take a lot of things for granted, mm -hmm. not just the things that we own, but our religious freedom, um, that we have laws in place to protect people from all walks of life, um, that we have multiple uh, political parties, which is something that I wasn't aware of. Um, and so for me, what we're really talking about is um, when I think people are afraid of ret refugees, we're really talking about them being afraid of what they don't understand or what they don't know. And that it's really diversity, you know, that maybe they've heard something about a certain religion or a certain kind of person. But when you sit down with someone and you actually are sitting across from them trying to communicate through Google Translate <laughs> sometimes, which isn't always correct, um, you know, and you start to ask questions and you hear things like, you know, my father's gone, my mother's gone, my sister's gone, like all these tragedies that they've gone through. Um, and to realize how much courage it does take for them to come to a new country, sometimes by themselves, um, sometimes to have to wait for their family members to come over, and to what terrified me was knowing that they might face people that would be cruel to them, or they might have to go through more challenges, you know, and so uh, the center has been around for a really long time. I agree with Eleanor saying that you know, it's, it's, we've already been a welcoming city. It would be really nice if we put it out there like that, officially. I also agree with um, when Daryl said that it's important to stand against hate. And one thing that also stood out for me is how regardless of our political climate, um, regardless of the religion, regardless of uh, what background the people in this community have come from, I have found an overwhelming support for people of diversity, for refugees, like when I, it was around Christmas time, looking for people to help. I mean, an outpouring of support from people that I'm, I didn't expect it from. So for me, this is already something in place. I also agree that it should maybe include other, not just refugees, but it would be a really good start. So thank you. Thank you. <coughs> so next, John Capillaris, you're on the, wait, is John still here? He was signed up on earlier, I don't, okay. So I'll cross that one. Uh, next is uh, Banu Symington. Banu, B-A-N-U, Symington, S-Y-M-I-N-G-T-O-N. And I own my home. It's outside of Twin Falls in Twin Falls County. So I stand here in support of the resolution and I am going to talk about something I don't talk about very frequently, and my heart is swelling at what I've heard from other people before me, at the passion and the very good feelings that they've I expressed. So I 
am an immigrant. And 12 years ago, you welcomed me. I'm a neighbor to many of you, and you welcomed me to Twin Falls. But my parents emigrated to the United States 45 years ago. And so now you know I'm not 45, because I was a little older <laughs> than zero when I got here. And my parents came with two children, and they had a third child here. And uh, my father came here for education. He became a university professor and taught scientists and many physicians. My mother became a lawyer, and she helped homeless veterans on the streets of Philadelphia find a home. My brother was born in the United States. He is an engineer and an MBA, and he manages a retirement fund for city employees in Manhattan. So he is helping union employees look forward to retirement and not being impoverished. My sister is a paralegal who works for human causes. I'm a physician, and I worked for 10 years in a healthcare shortage area, not because I had to. I was a US citizen. I chose to work in this shortage area because I wanted to help people who did not have physicians. I then moved here 12 years ago. And what I, w what I want to point out is, and I should also say that my parents were, my mother was a Muslim. I'm, so people come here and they establish roots in the United States in Twin Falls and they give back to the community in myriad ways. We know that from Choban Hamdi Ulukaya, who is giving back to this community in so many ways. So I feel like we have to support the welcoming resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Malin, you were signed up on the one before this, so, okay. You're approved, by the way, but you're obviously sticking around, so. Uh, next, I have uh, Terry Edwards. Terry Edwards, property owner, Twin Falls, E-D-W-A-R-D-S. Thank you. Go ahead. First of all, I would like to mention the fact that uh, uh, we have a uh, situation here in the community where we're getting input, but nobody's seeing it except the people that are taking the input. I would like to have that input transcribed so that people would understand what's going on and what the actual input was and what was brought forward about this resolution. Another thing I would like to mention is the fact that uh, once this input is there, I would like the city council to consider that, but put it on a ballot for citywide ballot to have the citizens of the city approve it or disapprove it. The other thing would be is that uh, I'm also a uh, grandson of, a, of, uh, of refugees. This is not about refugees, it's about everybody and the people that are segregating out, well, it's just, we're just anti-refugee. That's not true. We're concerned about the safety of the community, refugee or otherwise. So the people that are placing their emphasis on refugees are probably the biggest bigots in town. They're also probably the ones that have the most to lose if this was not a welcoming city for purposes other than community support. The other thing would be is the fact that here we have Planned Parenthood right in town and we're not, we're welcoming city, we're a neighborly city and we're killing, welcoming people into the community to kill babies. My goodness you folks, I don't know what's going on here with you city council members. I do appreciate you asking me to come forward and to voice my opinion and my uh, understanding of what's going on here but I think that when you take the 2030 agenda and then try to force it into a welcoming community resolution, you've got all these things that weren't valuable today that were decided 10 years ago, six years ago, five years ago. Today is today, not yesterday. So if you're gonna use that as your starting point for incorporating those items in the uh, resolution, I think that's wrong. And I think that if you're going to do something like that, you need to have a new 2030 based on today's situation. 
Has ever, anybody ever seen what's happened to Europe? Do, do you guys watch the news? Do you see what's going on over there? Let's welcome them all here. I'm sure they would like that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Edwards. Next, I have Mary Ann Ward. I'm Mary Ann Ward, which should be easy, but it's not. M-A-R-Y, middle name A-N-N-E, Ward, W-A-R-D, spelling. I live at 11, uh, 1130 Sunburst Street here in Twin Falls, and I am a property owner. <coughs> All right. Twin Falls has always been a welcoming community. My parents found it so when they moved here 47 years ago. I found it so when I moved here two years ago. I have several friends, many friends, who have moved here over the last half century or so, and they have all found it to be a welcoming community. This is a welcoming community. It's a shame that we need to have a resolution to say so. It's just a fact. But if we need a resolution to let the word out, then we should have one. I certainly intend to, to continue this tradition of being a welcoming community by welcoming anyone to our community. Whether they look like me, whether they talk like me, whether they re worship like me, whether they agree with me politically or socially or on any other issue, we have to be a welcoming community. I, I, I absolutely do not see any other way to live, actually. And I would like to say, sir, that is a wonderful resolution you drafted. A couple concerns about the grammar and punctuation, but <laughs> <laughs> other than that, other than that, it's great. And again, how can anyone possibly quibble about anything other than grammar, uh, about anything in that? It's just so obvious and, and matter of fact, and, and it's just the way it is. So thank you for that, and thank you to the people who spoke before me. They're, they said things so much better than I ever could, and I really appreciate it. Most of their points of view. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is, Travis. oh yes, Travis. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, so in, in defense of my grammar skills, I did go to school in Montana, and, <laughs> and, and, um, and so maybe you won't hold that against me. That explains so much. <laughs> so next is, uh, We got the resolution very late in the day, right before I was ready to leave, and I happened to be having uh, dinner with a English teacher that I'm with, and she had a couple points that she was. <laughs> she had her red pen out as well, so. <laughs> to Travis's credit, it was a team effort. So <laughs> yeah. Sure. So uh, next is uh, Janine <laughs> Frazier. Okay. Uh, Jan Hall. My name's Jan Hall, H-A-L-L, -L, 596 Buckingham Drive. Just had a brief statement about... Hold on just a second, Jan, until we, we get the clicker going. My name's it's less about spelling it correctly and more about getting <laughs> an input. I very much appreciate the opportunity to speak about the welcoming city um, proclamation because I think the Boy Scouts have brought a great idea to our city. I travel extensively um, and proudly. I, I love to travel the world. I just spent last summer th um, 18 days with, no, 17 days with 18 women and no drama in Central Europe. Um, and so I had the opportunity to go to Berlin and to go to um, Prague and to Budapest and to Poland and to some areas which historically, um, I really like history and I like to study that and see what other countries and how other countries handle things. Through all of that, one of the biggest words that comes to mind is transparency. And the way that those go governments, in Berlin they have their legislature, their national legislation, where ev it's a clear dome where everybody walks around and can watch their government working. There's some things that I, I really gather from all my travels that I enjoy and very much value and like to bring it back to home. 
but one of the most important things is that I found is people are people no matter where I go. And I've been welcomed into so many countries, and I want to continue to welcome people here because we do take things for granted, and I have taken for granted that we are a warm, welcoming place, and I want to continue that, and I support this 100%. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. <coughs> Next is uh, Mike Jones. Uh, thank you, Council, and uh, fine folks who have offered your opinions tonight. Uh, my name is Mike Jones, M-I-K-E-J-O-N-E-S. I've got a little different take on what's going on tonight. I definitely do not favor the welcoming uh, resolution, welcoming city, in the form that it is generally attributed to. I have a different take on what I'm complaining about tonight in addition to that. I'm a Boy Scout. Actually, I hold an Eagle badge that I acquired in 1957. It's been dear to me since that time. One of the Boy Scouts of America's greatest achievements by a scout, by the way. I earned this honor between the years of 54 and 57. It took a lot of hard work and perseverance. I had tremendous scout leaders who assisted me, prodded me in this endeavor. Politics, uh, however, of any kind were not allowed in the Boy Scouts and no one had have dared tried to make that influence. Dwight D. Eisenhower was president of the United States of America during these years and as a Boy Scout concerned youth, that read a lot, I was aware that President Eisenhower deported approximately 1.5 million Mexican illegal aliens during that time. They had been allowed to come to our country during World War II for farm labor because all of our boys of military age were off fighting in the war. Their work credentials mandated that they return to Mexico at the cessation of the war. The law-abiding ones returned home and at least 1.5 million decided to break the law and not leave. They were removed and returned to Mexico on buses for the most part. No one made an issue of it because they were here illegally and were breaking the law. I doubt very much if they caught them all, but if any are still here, they are still illegal aliens subject to removal. They were not welcomed at that time by Americans. My scout leaders did not make an issue or even mention these types of activities. People were of a much higher character in those years and prided themselves in being able to take care of themselves and not rely on a socially oriented government safety net or welfare system for their care. There was no such thing in 1957. Also at this time in history and my life, President Eisenhower built the wonderful National Interstate Freeway System that we all enjoy today. The great majority of what we have today was built under his administration. I can assure you also that Ill illegal aliens did not build it. Today with unfettered immigration, illegal and legal, and a welfare system that is totally out of control, we can't even afford to maintain and repair those roads and bridges that are crumbl crumbling before our eyes that were paid for in full during the administration's tenure that built them. That's back when everyone worked and everyone actually paid taxes. Moving forward 60 years, I have been confronted by a move at this city council by a scoutmaster by the name of Mark Crandall, in which he brought a troop of Boy Scouts under his leadership to a meeting here in full uniform, actually under the guise of a flag presentation which was verified to me by the director of the Snake River Council of the Boy Scouts of America. Under this guise, he presented a petition from the Boy Scouts to make Twin Falls a welcoming city for refugees being resettled here by CSI, which includes illegal aliens and others that are of such great value to Mr. us. Mr. Jones. And an op-ed in Times News on Excuse April me. the 23rd. Sir, your time is up. So if you could please complete your thought, I would appreciate it. I can complete. Complete thought. a thought. Pardon Give me, me your conclusion. What's what's your wrap it up? You need to wrap it up. Your time is up. Uh, I don't. Uh, he talked about. <clears throat> he goes on to say we need more Boy Scouts to fulfill this moral obligation. He feels refugees. He feels towards refugees. I feel he is mistaken by these statements and merely reiterated his own personal opinions and feelings on this matter. I must add that at this point that Dr. Crandall is a very good cardiologist. In fact, he is my cardiologist. He is, however, a very poor scout leader. It is quite apparent he pursues a liberal agenda and has infused this into the boys and his troop to further his own feelings and ambitions. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Jones. I'm going to wrap you up there. Next, I have Vicki Davis. I live at 145 
Avenida Del Rio, which is in the county, but it's I'm on city services, so I'm as close as you can get. And if you just hold on just a second till we get your name in the system there, and then I'll. C K Y. Go ahead. All right. The aspect of this, the refugee issue is a symptom. It's not the real problem. There is an agenda in this country that's going on that I would wager that there's very few people out here in the audience in this entire town that even understand. And it has to do with globalization, including the internationalization of our highway systems, turning them into what essentially are corridors, um, shipping links, corridors, that um, connect to ports. Now here in the desert, we don't think very much about ports because we don't have a, a seafront. We're not on the sea. But this agenda is turning through the creation of zones. It is turning areas of our country into inland ports. And that's what I believe they have done here in Twin Falls. The county has done this through this urban redevelopment zone. And what it does essentially is to create, when they create a zone, it has its own charter, it can create its own debt. Um, basically it draws revenue off of the city this is how cities are going bankrupt all around our country because of this zone development for this international transportation system. Okay, embedded into CSI was, um, and probably still is, uh, CEDO, the South southeastern Idaho um, something economic, development economic council. Economic Development Organization. Right. Okay, Jan Rogers, the lady who brought in Shobani, she was also director of the International Development Council. What they are doing in these inland port zones is bringing in foreign direct investment, foreign businesses. Now when that business was brought here into Twin Falls, it was done on the promise that there would be jobs created for Idahoans. And it did, he did have Idahoans employed for about two years. Then he let them go and he started bringing in refugees and to work at his plant. He doesn't employ very many Americans at that plant. And that's the way these international zones work. That system, this system, this, it, it, it's a stealth system of treason. Treason by contract, if you will. Um, it, it, it will be used ultimately to break up the United States. And creating these international zones Sanctuary cities is the way that they are doing it. They are countries within a country under their own system of law. There is a guy uh, who is on the Bretton Woods Committee right now in the United States trying to get Arizona and Oklahoma to sign an interstate compact. His name is Shanker Singham. He's, he's on the Bretton Woods Committee. And he is trying to get them to pass it an interstate compact so that they can create these zones. Ms. Davis, your time is, is up. Okay. I, I will be, I'll write something up for this and I will submit it to you. And, uh, Thank you. Everybody in this room is involved. Thank you. So next I have, so I believe it's Tessa Wilsey. Was, it, was I right on that? Yeah. Oh, good. W-I-L-L-S-E-Y. I'm 16. I live in Twin Falls. I don't own a business because I'm 16. <laughs> All right. If you hold and on hold on just a second, we'll get oh. you ready to go. Go ahead. Um, I am here in support of the, re of the resolution. 
Uh, my family last year got to mentor a refugee family who had just come to America. They were really, really nice people. They had six kids. Um, most of them were fairly small. We taught them how to play Candyland, and we like basically helped them learn how to live in America. And even though there was a language barrier and we mostly communicated through Google Translate, it was a really fun experience, and I really enjoyed getting to know these people. I also helped at a refugee summer school, and um, we just taught little kids how to speak English better and how to function in a classroom because they had never really gotten the chance to be educated. And um, all the refugees that I've met have just been wonderful people. And I support the resolution because I think that we need to be a welcoming city because all of these people are wonderful. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Tessa. <coughs> uh, next is Katie Seip. Did they get that one right? Yes. Okay. And if you'd please uh, state your address and whether you're a property owner in the city of Twin Falls. I live in the county. I don't live in the city, but I am a property owner in the city. Okay. And hold on just a second until we get your name in there, and we'll be ready to go. All right. There you go. Thank you. I am here to tell you that I support the resolution to make Twin Falls a welcoming city. I've had a number of experiences uh, meeting both refugees and people who have just moved to Twin Falls, and I think that this is a needed uh, resolution and I hope that we um, with some tweaks although I think it was done very well I, I think that's something that we should we should um, adopt thank you thank you uh, next is Pegan Cook hi I'm Pegan P-E-G-A-N Cook I live at 839 Harmony Road which is just outside the city limits I lived in Twin Falls City for many years and had a business here for many years, too. And I'm just here to encourage oh, you to pass... Hold on just a second. Oh, sorry. There you go. Go ahead. Right. I'm just here to encourage you to pass this resolution. I travel a lot, as many of the other people do, and I think this is a wonderful idea for the city of Twin Falls. That's all. Okay. Thank you, Pagan. Uh, next is David Woodhead. Just as it sounds, I live at 251 Fifth Avenue East, Twin Falls. <coughs> when I first saw the resolution tonight, I, I was a little worried because, my gosh, it has as many whereases as the Boise and the Ketchum resolutions do. But here's where it differs. Staff has done an admirable job of linking the whole concept of a welcoming city to your strategic plan. It's as though the whole argument for having a welcoming city in the first place is embedded in your what you've already been doing. So, tweak it if you will. By all means, correct the grammar. <laughs> but I support this 100%, and me think you thus protest too much for modern. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. <laughs> Next is Christy Hill. My name is Christy Hill, K-R-I-S-T-Y, and I live at 932 Starlight Loop. That's here in Twin Falls. <clears throat> All right, go ahead. So David kind of stole what I was going to say. I was going to say basically what this resolution shows is that everything in here has already been laid out in our strategic plan that was, um, I think you said instituted in 2013. Um, so it's already been four years that we've been doing this, and I think this is maybe um, just kind of an in-name sort of thing, but I think it's important that we see ourselves as a neighborly community or a welcoming community. Um, I am in support of it. Um, I, don't, I don't think we have to do anything different. I know that there's a lot of, I think anything that would come against this has to do with refugees, but like has been stated, 
it's not specifically refugee based. It's for everyone to welcome everyone, but we want to include everyone. Um, I have had some experience with refugees. I did mentor a family and um, spent some time volunteering um, at, with the refugee center and with their summer school program and stuff. I've had a chance to get to know some of them. Um, I know that they they wouldn't be here. This is not where they want to be. They want to be at home. They want to be there. They can't be there. And they need a safe place to come. And I feel like um, just because we have been privileged to be born in a safe place shouldn't make us feel like we are better or that we are more privileged and they can't be allowed to come here. They are. They have the same rights as human <coughs> beings to be safe and they need to be welcomed in. And we need to see ourselves as a welcoming community and not um, and, and not excluding anyone just based on where they're from or that they're different and we can make it work and I think that we have been doing that and by s passing this resolution that um, that will just maybe solidify that in our minds so thank you thank you Brad Wills do you want to speak on this issue as well no Lucy Lucy Wills Mayor and Council, Travis, thank you. That is a very nicely drafted resolution. I had something prepared. Lucy, if you hold on just a second until we oh. get, you, get your name plugged in yeah. there. Yeah. All this newfangled technology. Get in there. Thank you. There you go. So I had something prepared. Um, I am an immigrant. Um, and I'm here not because I'm not a bigot. I have nothing to lose. I work for a living. I do that every day. So uh, illegal is not the issue for me. And refugee is not the issue for me. And I want to thank Tessa for taking on um, and mentoring an um, immigrant slash refugee family and children because I had a Tessa in my life when I was eight, and I appreciated her very much. But with Anna Schoel's permission, I would like to, instead of read, uh, instead of talking about what I was going to say, read the optimist's dream. So, the optimist creed promises you yourself to be strong, that nothing can disturb your peace of mind. Promise yourself to talk health, happiness, and prosperity to every person you meet. Promise yourself to make all friends feel that there is nothing in that there is something in them. Promise yourself to look at the sunny side of everything and to make your optimism come true. Promise yourself to think only of the best, to work only for the best, and to expect only the best. Promise yourself just to be enthusiastic about the success of others as you are about your own. Promise yourself to forget the mistakes of the past and to press on the greater achievements of the future. Promise yourself to wear a cheerful continuance at all times and to give every living creature you meet a smile. Promise yourself to give much time to an improvement of yourself that you have no time to criticize others. Promise yourself to be too large to worry, too no noble to anger, too strong to fear, and too happy to permit the presence of trouble. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lucy. Uh, Anna Scholes. C-H-O-L-E-S. I live in the county, but I'm a, pro a business owner in the city. Great. So as Lucy said, I actually came here to accept a proclamation for the youth of our community of optimism. And so Travis, the only suggestion I have is instead of neighborly, could we use the word optimistic <laughs> in how we describe <laughs> this? <laughs> so, uh, a little bit about my story, you heard other people. I, my parents came to the United States after World War II 
They came with nothing. They came from Italy. There were enough people that lived that creed that helped us who, you know, my mother had a third grade education. My father pumped gas. Okay, I work. I pay taxes. I volunteer. I mean, you have to invest in the future. And so the reason I gave you the Optimist Creed was for you to realize that the investment that you make now in people makes a difference 50 years from now. And I am here to support the proclamation. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. <coughs> uh, next is Jesse Stroop. Okay, so not on this issue. Okay. Uh, Candace Ramsey. My name is spelled C A N D I S E. I just wanted to come here today. I, uh, my address, do you want my address? Is I, I am a, a member of the community. I've worked in the Twin Falls area for over 20 years. The last 13 of those years has been in child protection, forensic interviewing, and mental health therapy for children who are victims of abuse. And I want to bring forward with that experience um, my knowledge and awareness that when we look at being a welcoming city, there are no separate sects of um, ethnic groups or um, religious groups who are more likely to commit any particular kind of crime. Um, as was mentioned earlier, I feel like um, as a social worker, it is a core belief that um, we do need to be Helping people have human dignity to grow as human beings. And I feel like when I look at this resolution, which is very well written and represents the spirit of the Constitution of our country, I believe, and the Bill of Rights to some extent, I believe it's very inclusive and would like to see where it can grow from here as far as encouraging businesses and various community partners to be more active in helping to acclimate people who come to our area and to also help us understand in the community more about how to be good um, patriots to our neighbors. Um, I have a lot to say, so I'm coming back some other day, but I appreciate the time to talk. Um, I do think that we are a city uh, that has been very welcoming I feel like I should be talking back here, but it's you guys, I'm sorry. Um, I believe we are a welcoming city, and I believe that this just um, comes at a perfect time politically and culturally in our world to say that the people of Twin Falls are good people and that we want to step forward and do something to make sure people know that we're not going to get caught up in any sort of political undercurrent or um, any belief systems that would not foster the growth of our country based on what we believe in, which is equal rights, freedom of speech, and those various strong constitutional values. So thank you very much. Thank you, Candace. Mm -hmm. Next is Austin Welch. Austin Welch, my name is spelled A-U-S-T-I-N-W-E-L-C-H. My address is 1345 Mountain View Drive. My parents own the property, but they let me live on it for free. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Austin. Go ahead. Um, I have spent time with refugee families here in Twin Falls. I have found that they... I have found them to be good, hardworking people interested in improving their families' lives. I am proud Twin Falls has a refugee program 
to help others have the good life that we enjoy. Please pass the ref the resolution to make Twin Falls a welcoming city. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Next is uh, Olivia Welch. My name is Olivia Welch. It's spelled O-L-I-V-I-A-W-E-L-C-H. And I live oh. on 1345 Mountain View Drive, and my parents own the house. All right. Go ahead, Olivia. I'm nine years old. My family has the, has the opportunity to mentor a refugee family. We love this family. They're hard, they're kind, hardworking, and they are trying really, really hard to learn English. Please, please adopt the resolution making Twin Falls a welcoming city. Thank you. Thank you, Olivia. So that is all of the people who I have signed up for uh, input on this issue. Is there anyone else in the audience who wishes to address the, the council here? So. We'll start over here. So if you'd please come forward. Hi, my name is Jane, J-A-N-E, Anderson with an O. We're not sure. Oh, and, and actually, Jane, yeah, your address, please. 3642 North, number B, 2500 East, Twin Falls. Go ahead. We're not really sure where the Anderson comes from in my family. It could be Welch or Scottish or Irish, and I sure as heck don't know where this curly hair comes from. I would like to encourage you to adopt this resolution as soon as possible. Don't please drag it out so that we Twin Falls suffers from national negative publicity. I don't want to see that for Idaho, and I don't want to see it for this town. I grew up here. I would not have my farm, my house, my wonderful life here in this town if it wasn't for the Bersarios that came in in the 1950s, and they were kicked out after they had covered our ass while we were fighting the war. It is not 1800s. We have moved on. We do not have slaves. It is not 1915 when beer was only a quarter. Now it costs $7. Things change. We have German beer here. I would like to see, personally, more international movies here with subtitles. I want to go to a restaurant and hear foreign languages spoken. I want to go to restaurants that offer me foreign food. Fabulous food. Look at me. I love to eat. I want more restaurants. I like Rock Creek. It's steak and potatoes, but I like other food too. So probably that's all I should say at this point, but please don't drag this out. Don't make this town an object of ridicule by the rest of this nation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jane. Sir. My name is Paul Thompson, T-H-O-M-P-S-O-N. I reside at 762 Blue Lakes. And, and when my church finds out that there's a time limit <laughs> software program, I am in a lot of trouble. <laughs> there you go, Paul, go so, ahead. Listen, Mr. Mayor and, and members of the city council and, and city staff and fellow citizens of Twin Falls, uh, it, it is a grand thing to live in such a city as this, and I, and I mean that with all great sincerity. My, I don't have anything to add or to take away from anything that's already been said this evening. Perhaps I have some suggestions. I'm not so sure I like the word resolution. I might prefer the word proclamation. Uh, that's a semantic probably at some level, um, but I offer it for consideration. Perhaps the word proclamation.
proclamation is a better word than resolution. Uh, I, I do think, and Travis, I appreciate the work that you and your team have put toward this. I think the word neighborly is a smart word. I actually think it's a stronger word. Uh, a neighborly <coughs> community is a completely different noticed at all levels. And so I, I put that as, a, as my support for that consideration in the drafting and in the processing of this. Um, I would be amiss if I did not take the opportunity in light of the neighborly or welcoming language to not be a voice for the unborn who I believe, and this comes from a belief position, it's one of my faiths, it's one of my beliefs, that here in our community, we understand it's a legal practice, and so it, it fits inside of the legalities of life. But in all reality, one of the greatest strikes against any community is that they would welcome or consider themselves neighborly while the abortion of unborn children takes place within our city limits. Please, and I plead with you, to give consideration, to be a voice even for the unborn. Diversity is a grand thing, and I'm grateful for all the diversity that we have here. And, and so I, I stand before you as a grateful citizen, thankful for the diversity. I live in a neighborhood that is greatly diverse, and I love every one of my neighbors, and I'm grateful for that great diversity in which I live in this city. And so at some level I'm saying I give support and I give encouragement to you to, to continue the good work of the draft that you have before us. Thank you, and thank you for your hard work. Thank you, Paul. Uh, yes, in the back, come on up. I appreciate you giving me this opportunity since I was not on the agenda. That's, that's quite all right. My name is Pat Peterson with an SDN. I own my own home. I live in Twin Falls County. My background is in social work and psychology. I've worked in that field till I retired. What I have heard today is not so much a comment about where we're going and what we're, where we've been. We know we've always been, and we carry a rich heritage of being generous and embracing to all types in Idaho. I worked in a significant migrant office. We worked with also the refugee center. I've worked with Russians. I've worked with Vietnamese. I've worked with many cultures in working them into our society. But what I'm finding in America right now is that we have to label everything. Labeling people. We put people into labels because it gives us a sense of structure and organization. But we are human beings. You cannot put a human being in a box. And when you call someone or you label someone refugee, alcoholic, sex offender, you're putting a label on somebody that's conjuring up preconceived, conscious, or whatever prejudices that you bring to the table with you. But I caution us in not being so involved with making ourselves feel better because we're here trying to unite. And we are. You can tell in this room, we are united. But we are not united as a nation, and we are not going to go out of this meeting tonight arm in arm, lighting tea candles, and making paper hearts in the sky. We need to work on communication. We need to show we have compassion. Writing a sign on a piece of paper that says we welcome refugees doesn't mean anything. We need a welcoming. We need blankets. We need food. The time that we've generated in this meeting tonight could have generated a lot of resources to make someone feel welcomed. And that's all I have to say. Thank you, Pat. Anyone else? Yes, please, come forward. My name is Elizabeth Slifer. That's S-L-I-F as in Frank, E-R. And I am a property owner in Twin Falls County. All right, go ahead. It 
it sounds as if a few people speaking tonight are energized by conspiracy theories. But it is my belief, my spiritual belief, that if people are met one-on-one -on -one as people with love and support and understanding, love will transform hate. And that's who I hope we can continue to be. Thank you. Is there one, anyone else who wishes to address? Yes. And then I'll catch you in the, in the back right after this. My name is Glenita Ziderveld, and it's probably fitting I go last. G-L-E-N-N-E-D-A. Last name Ziderveld, Z as in zebra, U-I, D as in David, E-R, V as in Victor, E-L, D as in David. Good thing that doesn't take that much in minutes. I'm from Jerome, and I'm actually here on behalf of the family of the little girl that was raped. Um, we are just oh, finishing a oh, long... Hold on just a second until we get the timer rolling. Oh, there you go. A D, go ahead. Unless there's not enough room. But <laughs> we'll get it. Go ahead. Um, this has been a really long, hard year, and there, there's always going to be division. There's always going to be ugliness. There's always going to be hate. You know, that's just the world we live in. And um, one little girl was completely not in hate or judging somebody, and she got hurt really bad. These are things that we need to consider. It's not like we're pointing and making fingers. But the truth of the matter is a little girl did get hurt. And this one, you know, who wants to risk that? Whose little girl do you want to be next? So my, my thing is, is my family is immigrants to Ziderveld. I mean, my grandmother came from Russia, grandfather from Holland, captured by the Germans, put in work camps, and that's how I'm here totally understand that. But we can be a welcoming city without signing anything. Because why, why all of a sudden do we have to put our name to something to make us a great city? Because obviously, look, everybody wants to be welcoming and neighborly. And, you know, and to think of that neighborly, too, I, I haven't really seen a lot of you guys helping the little girl and little family. I think they're also your neighbors. But I haven't seen any of you guys helping them or the refugees, because I've seen a lot of them. I haven't seen a lot of people coming forward and helping them in this situation. But I do want to bring some things to light that I have witnessed that in doing so, that there's not a timely matter when the police were called. It took about an hour and a half to get there. So you might need to look on, you know, because there is a different culture. And it's just not food, and it's not music, and it's not, you know, there is a different culture, and it would be awfully naive of us to not take that into consideration for our children. And, um, and obviously, as boys, we're practicing their culture. That was a hard reality. That's a harsh reality. That's really hard to sit there and witness that. Um, so we need to... To not, you know, we need to, as Americans, if we are going to bring them here, you know, what is okay in their community isn't okay in America. We, we don't approve of them doing that to little girls. So we need to, as a community, say, what are we going to do to make sure that this doesn't happen again? If we're going to be neighborly, then what are we going to do to help teach them that this is not how we do this here? And we don't need to have something written. We don't have, don't sign your name to something because there's usually a small print. There's yep. usually some kind of motivation or agenda to you guys signing your name to something when we can be welcoming without, your, your without time, that. Your time is up. Okay. But thank you. Thank you. I believe we have one more person in the back. Two more, she says. Okay. My name is Roxanne Paulson, R-O-X-A-N-N-E, Paulson, P-A-U-L-S-O-N. -E. 
A-U-L-S-O-N. I own my own home in the county, but we, my husband and I, have over 28 rentals in the city. All right, go ahead. I had a nice little neat note, and then I have been writing all over this, so it's like, oh my goodness. One, one thing that I'm hearing tonight, well, one thing I'm not hearing is what is the purpose of, of this uh, resolution? Uh, do we need it? I'm in 100% agreement that we don't need to put anything in writing. I've traveled all over the world and I always love coming back to Twin Falls, Idaho because we are friendly, we are welcoming. Um, we are not necessarily safe and I'm not blaming that on refugees at all. I dedicated most of my adult life into the medical field and I feel like I am not about to say that all refugees are wonderful, but I believe most refugees are wonderful, just like I believe most of my neighbors are wonderful. But I've also found that most of our veterans are wonderful, and most of our elderly are wonderful. Most of our mentally ill are wonderful, and most of our drug addicts are wonderful. Twin Falls, Idaho is the number one meth capital in Idaho. That is very sad. Um, I don't understand why we have to be a welcoming city to the refugees and not to the drug pushers <coughs> and the meth addicts. God bless you, it's the truth. Um, we need to focus on what is tearing our community apart. I am not for CSI's refugee program. I contribute money, lots of money, to an African village because I believe those children should be fed and clothed and housed in their own country. I realize that it, it would be, it is difficult to keep the refugees in their particular area, but it's not impossible to keep them close to home. I believe they should be sponsored by churches and individuals, not by a college that profits from refugees. I'll, I'll, I'll stop there. I was also like, um, Mike Jones, very upset. My son was a Boy Scout. They taught him how to tie knots. They taught him about safety, taught him about um, survival, community service. They never taught him about politics in their skewed views. That is so wrong. And Dr. Crandall is a wonderful cardiologist, and I am ashamed of him as a Boy Scout leader because that is wrong. He brought his belief <coughs> into these little boys' minds. Um, gosh, there was, there's just so much to say. I just wish that... Um, we could vote on this. I don't know why this is, you know, some people can't be here, and I don't know why this can't go to a vote. I don't know why it has to be in writing. We're a wonderful community. We have so much to offer. I don't like being manipulated by the bureaucracy. Well, Sun Valley did it, and Boise did it. Therefore, why? Why do we have to do it? Why are we spend, spending taxpayers' money, <coughs> wasting your time? We're smarter than this. Your My time's up. up. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. And is there one more in the back who wanted to come up, or is that it? Yes. So, last call. Please come on forward. Hold the microphone down just a little bit, please. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. At first, I didn't feel qualified, and I'm not qualified to speak, but uh, I, I didn't feel that I was because I haven't really followed this issue closely, and so I wanted to hear. I just came tonight to hear what everyone had to say. But the longer I listen, the more I can see that there's a big question on why this is necessary. Obviously, everyone here and most everyone in Twin Falls are welcoming, caring, considerate people. And so it makes me wonder, as I'm listening to this, what is the purpose of 
this resolution or whatever you call it. And it makes me worry a little bit because once you go down this road, I mean, what is the next step? Will there be regulations written because of this re resolution? Uh, it's hard to see what the purpose really is. It's a wonderful thing to say, yes, we're welcoming, but we obviously are. And like the one lady said, you know, this time spent, obviously lots of time has been spent writing this, considering it, thinking about it, when we could be spending our time doing something about it. So to have it written on a piece of paper makes me wonder where it goes from there. And I certainly hope that it isn't leading down a slippery slope to sanctuary city status. But it's, when it seems so unnecessary to write this and put it down on paper, when we do have a good reputation for being a welcoming city overall, um, it just makes me wonder about the purpose. Thank you. Thank you. So I think that's the end of the folks who have signed up and who wanted to speak on this. And it's a smidge warm up here, and so I'd like to take about a six-minute break, and maybe we can make sure we've got the air conditioner rolling right, because I think the folks in the back of the room are a little warm too. So mm -hmm. um, we'll take a short break, and then we'll come back.
We good? All right. All right, we're going to go ahead and uh, reconvene the council meeting now. So you folks in the back, if you could uh, wrap up your conversation, that'd be great. So I uh, appreciate all of the uh, public participation in the discussion this evening and certainly appreciate the staff and their efforts in uh, bringing back what we as a council uh, directed them to do specific to this issue. So now uh, I think it's time for us as a council to talk about the direction we would like to take this. Um, I would note that we've heard input and opinions off and on, for and against, for better than a year now at these council meetings related to various aspects of uh, kind of the principles behind this concept. Um, I don't think we lack for um, a our thumb on the pulse of the community across the board. Uh, to Travis's point earlier, I think uh, it is fair to say there is a sliding spectrum of uh, desire on a resolution or some uh, words on a piece of paper. But personally, I feel it's time for us as a council to give some direction toward an action and stop talking about the issue. So I uh, would welcome some conversation this evening on that. Uh, I'll start off with uh, Chris talking. Well, first of all, everybody that showed up, everybody that's listening, uh, if you don't know how rare this is, the city councils pass multi-million dollar budgets with nobody in the audience except city staff. To have you come out for something like this that is so emotional, divisive, yes, but also of concern to every family member and taxpayer and uh, grandparent, uh, we are local government. We try to listen. We have as much transparency, I think, as any level of government. Uh, as uh, Sean indicates, we've been talking about this on and off for a year. Uh, the last public comment session, we had about 70, about 80 percent of those show up in support of the, albeit imperfect, but still a welcoming community. Uh, type of a uh, resolution. It's almost exactly the same percentage tonight. I figured 79%. Uh, this tells me that we have a concurrence of public opinion <coughs> that is approaching four out of five people that however perfect it is, the value of stating a welcoming community type of a resolution outweighs disagreeing with it or saying why do we need it. Sometimes the most trivial, inconsequential type of ideas carry the most weight in people's minds because they feel they have an input and they can make their voice heard. I'm very satisfied that we have the guidance with a little bit of tweaking of the words to pass the resolution and get on to the much bigger issues before us and hopefully in our actions in the future uh, will bear out that we are a welcoming community by um, how we bring new people into the community and welcome the new businesses that are here. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Anyone else from the council care to share their thoughts? Suzanne Hawkins. Thank you. I'm going to argue the other side for a moment. <laughs> I can't help it. So I believe Twin Falls is a very welcoming community. I believe that our actions do show that and has shown that for years. However, our strategic plan, our city mission statement, all of our documentation that we already have already states that. In my mind, this resolution is redundant and most likely unnecessary not only because we have already stated who we are in our official documents, but because it is a divisive issue. As city council members, we are the elected representation of the community. And aside from what we've heard here, I can tell you that outside of this meeting, I have had, I would say, 80 to 1 in the other direction with people who have stopped in my business, but they're very afraid to come forward and speak because they're afraid they're going to be labeled or that somebody's going to be angry with them for feeling the way they feel. And I just feel like even though that the majority of people willing to speak in favor of it are publicly announcing it, that it is a very divisive topic still. 
and I don't see as city leaders where we're not Republicans, we're not Democrats, we're community members trying to help our community heal from a long year. I think we've wasted a lot of time, a lot of energy. I think we've wasted city staff time, and I think we need to get back to the business of governing over the issues that we have jurisdiction over, our finances, our streets, our water, our sewer, the things that we've been entrusted to take care of. We have not been given any authority over refugees, over immigration, over who moves into our community, over how the highways are ran, whether they're corridors or whatever they might be. That is not what we have been elected to do. And I think we are really muddling in an area that we don't belong. I think that the refugee program is a federal program. It is administered through CSI. And I believe if we want some kind of a welcoming document, that CSI should be the one bringing it because it is their program. And if they wanted to ask the city to partner with them in some way, we've always been a good partner in helping in our community members. But I don't feel that this document does anything positive. Um, it reiterates what we've already stated. I think it's all in writing already. So at this point in time, I cannot support a resolution of any type. Thank you. Chris Reed. So over the last uh, couple of months, weeks as we've been talking a little bit about this. Um, probably my biggest concern with any resolution like this welcoming community is, is what one of the individuals spoke about was labeling and taking a specific population and saying you're welcome or you're, you're better or you're different than somebody else. And I feel that this resolution takes that out of it. And so as I've read this, as I've looked over it, I've listened to people, there is a stigma whether we feel it or not, about our ability to welcome, whether that's something that was put on us by media someplace else, not, not here, um, it, it's there. And it's concerning to people. It doesn't affect me personally, but I'm here to represent Twin Falls, not just Chris Reed. And so as I look at this, this encompasses everybody in Twin Falls. It encompasses whether you're coming here to shop, whether you're living here, whether you're going to be here for a while, whether you're just a, sh a short stop on, on, your, on your trail wherever you're going, it encompasses those individuals. And so that's why I like it. Um, I, I'm not somebody when it comes to grammatical errors, so it looks fine to me. Apparently they're mine. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm a product of Chicago public schools, so maybe that's the issue also. Um, one other thing that was brought up several times, and I feel like I need to, in my opinion, correct it, um, with the Boy Scouts. I'm an Eagle Scout. I've been a Scoutmaster three times. Um, there's a merit badge called Citizenship in the Community. And so the young men are asked to be a part of their community, learn about it, be a part of it. Uh, that's why a lot of the boys end up here on Monday nights, and they lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance because they're told to, in order to get that merit badge, which is a required merit badge, they need to come to a meeting. And so I am never gonna tell those young men that they did something wrong, their scoutmaster did something wrong, they were doing what the Boy Scouts of America have asked them to do. Thank you, Chris. Nikki Boyd. Well, I wanna thank all of our citizens, which include our staff, who who have put a lot of thought and a lot of care and concern into what they wanted to say. Um, I'm really disappointed. I look out here and two thirds of the people who thought it was important enough to be here tonight left before the conversation was over. And I am not impressed. Several weeks ago, I voted yes on a motion that was made and seconded that basically said we would continue this discussion and staff would work on a draft and bring it back to us, which meant there was going to be more discussion. I believe that bringing awareness to the public, to our citizens about our strategic plan, our, for, our focus areas, which specifically drive our budget and how we spend money 
and the oaths of office all of us in public service take, it has been a good education for all of us. And I believe that we have discussed this issue. We've come together. We are not ever going to all agree on anything and everything, and that's okay. But I will be voting no on a resolution or a proclamation because I believe everything that we've talked about that we believe in is already in writing and we don't need to add anything to it. Thank you, Nikki. Greg Lanting. I believe in the resolution for this reason. Okay, I believe that we have been painted just as the Muslims have been painted with a wide brush is that they're all bad by, by certain parts of the media. I believe we have been brushed with that same brush here in Twin Falls. And that's why I feel we need to make a statement that says that's not who we are. Okay, People are never going to go from the outside press and go look at our strategic plan. I'm sorry. This, it's not going to happen. Maybe one somewhere along the line. Okay, <clears throat> But they're going to see that we, we have decided that we're taking a stand against the treatment, uh, we're taking a stand that we are a welcoming community. I love the United States. I was very happy with the paragraph that talked about that we take an oath to represent how we feel about the, the uh, our oath of office as well as our, our, our policemen. I love Twin Falls. I grew up out in Twin Falls County. I knew from a very early age I was going to live once I was out of college, I was going to re live the rest of my life in the city of Twin Falls, and that is my plan. I planned. I came here within a month of graduating from college. I was a resident of Twin Falls, and I plan to be a resident of Twin Falls my entire life. I truly believe in uh, this city. I'm honored to have been able to serve it, not only as a city councilman, but I also spent eight years on planning and zoning helping shape the future of Twin Falls. And so I think it's time we make a statement about this issue and let people know that the majority of Twin Falls is a, we, we talk about being one, but let's let people know that we are one, that we're a welcoming community. And I fully agree with Chris concerning the scouts. They came here, they had been working at the refugee center as part of their Eagle Stout projects, so it was important to them. They welcomed me. They, they read about it, whether who where they got it from, I don't know. But they had read about a welcoming community in not only Twin Fall, or not only Boise, but Sun Valley, but other areas of the, work of the United States. They decided that would, that would be part of their project. I wished I had been that informed when I became an Eagle Scout because I wasn't. We didn't have the community one where we had to go to a meeting because I don't remember going to one. So that's a new Mariner badge. And so maybe things have changed since Mr. Jones was. Was, a, was in Scouts, but I stand in favor of us doing a resolution. The one Travis has written is great. Let's move forward with it. Ruth Pierce. So my take on the resolution is I am, I was not involved in the strategic planning process when it was first done, and I find it very refreshing that we have already addressed these issues in the different um, sections and I personally go am going to be supporting this plan just because it brings them all together into the forefront. <clears throat> so I'll, I'll share a few of my thoughts. Again, as I mentioned, we, we have talked about bits and pieces of these principles for a year. And there was a question asked by several of the folks, why is this important? Well, I'll tell you why it's important. It's important for the migrant who lives in our community who doesn't feel welcome. It's important for the person at the grocery store who's wearing a headscarf being judged. It's important for the gay person who cuts hair at a shop in Twin Falls being judged for being gay. It's important for all of us who live here legally as part of the community 
being contributing citizens, getting labeled and judged, uh, as, as someone commented, bringing preconceived notions that we all have about those folks to the table and making their experience to be part of our community, to be accepted as neighborly, uncomfortable or fearful um, and unwelcoming. So that's why I think it's most important. I also think it's important that we do take a stand to remind the rest of the world who may only get their news from blogs about Twin Falls, from the comments on the commentary on the Times News website. It, honestly, if you folks have not gone and read this, if that is what is painting our community as a welcoming community, we are far from it. The, the way that, that people treat each other in a world of anonymity, <coughs> pointing fingers and blame and name calling, and you are welcome to come read the 50 emails I've received in the last month and see how welcoming people are. It's important. Does it do much of anything as far as listing out actions? No. I think it reminds me as an elected official that I have a responsibility to the citizens who live here, period. Whether they're white or black or brown or green or blue, and no matter where they came from and no matter what language they spoke, that they are a part of this community that can bring value. And we have a responsibility, I think, to embrace each other and, and understand and learn from that with facts. What I like about this resolution is it restates things that we already have said and do. What I commend the Boy Scouts for who came here to request this is not that they wrote some words on a piece of paper and said, copy Boise's. They went and did two projects first where they spent time with newcomers to our community who may have felt marginalized. And they felt it was important that we as a community should do something to make them feel more welcome. Those two boys already did something. They went and did a project. Good for them. Many of the folks who spoke here today talked about mentoring families and volunteering. What I like about this resolution is it talks about all. So I don't care if you join the Optimist Club and go help youth. I don't care if you go run in the 5K fundraiser this weekend to help the elderly. I don't care if you go volunteer at the Refugee Center. We all have a responsibility to help our neighbors. And I can be supportive of what is in front of us tonight. I am certainly open to doing a little tweaking and you know, grammar checking or whatever. But to kick this issue another week or two weeks or three weeks or month or three months down the road um, doesn't get us anywhere. So I, again, I, I can be supportive of this. So, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, on the posted agenda, we labeled this purely as a as a discussion, discussion. item. Yep. The um, commitment that we made was we would bring back a draft for your review. Um, my error is I probably should have put possible action if if I felt that this was the direction we were going to go. So I do apologize for that. But we can't uh, take an action on an item that we didn't publicly post as something that would be. Um, so I, I no, apologize that's, for that. That's quite all right. I, uh, in, in all honesty, I think until we had a draft to review and to hear the comments tonight, I don't know that that we collectively were ready to take action either. So nobody's fault. Chris, did you have an additional comment? I just want to reaffirm that I thought the whereas, or the uh, be it resolved concluding statement of five lines said it very um, positively, precisely, and don't add another doggone word. And I'm not sure you should take any out, but I'm, I'm very satisfied with that summary statement. We, so at the, at the risk work. of creating a little bit more work for you, I think to go back and do a little grammar checking, yes. maybe see if Mrs. Burkhart's available to, uh, <laughs> to review that um, and, yes. and, and bring that back for action uh, soon. 
Yes, so um, in, in hearing the council's desire to be through this issue, um, next week's agenda, um, we do start early as a result of MPOC, MPOC um, hearings, but we can.